What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisor.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is Friday. It is May 12th, and we are back, hopefully, with some great breakdown and insight in these games. So if this is the first time you've been here, what we're going to do is we're going to go through every single game on the slate, every single pitcher that's available as of the making of this video. We're going to break that down. We're going to look at how they are against the opposing um, current rosters, and then we're going to dig in a little bit more and look at the bats that have had success against them in the past. Now, this isn't the all indicative of uh, the only thing to look at. We do have a bunch of stuff at fantasyteamadvisor.com, and what it is is we'll kind of show you. Um, we've got cheat sheets. We've got MLB trends. We've got uh, – We've got ballpark rankings, we have the MLB odds, we have sports betting, we have it all. And I have decided, and with everybody else, uh, we voted, and we are going to do something we've literally never done in the nine years we've been in existence. I am going to change the monthly price from $19.99 a month to $10 flat. $10 gets you a month access to everything. $10 a month, you cannot beat what we bring you here. So if you're interested in that, fantasyteamadvisors.com. We're also going to do a season pass for the MLB, which is um, a year pa a MLB season pass here. And uh, that will be on the site as well. So you can go check that out. Uh, there are a w few ways to win free content. Be a subscriber, like the video. If this video gets 50 likes and you guys leave a comment in that, one person will be chosen to win a free month of MLB content as well. That's if it gets 50 likes. If Another way to do it, like the video, be a subscriber, tell me who's going to hit home run and what inning they're going to hit it in. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into the matchups that are currently available. First game on the slate, the Mariners at the Tigers. You got Marco Gonzalez versus Matt Boyd. Gonzalez, 74 plate appearances, a 254 batting average, striking out 21.6% of those batters. And then Matt Boyd, 51 plate appearances, a 292 batting average, striking out 29.4% of those batters. Now, I don't know what exposure I'll have. I Just with the other pitchers on the slate, I won't have much, if any, exposure to these pitchers, but we will check out what bats we do like in this. So the Tigers bats that have had success against Gonzalez, I mean, there's not a ton. He has, in 74 plate appearances, 16 strikeouts, giving up five doubles and two home runs. Two home runs are Javi, three for 11 with a double and a home run. And then Eric Hossi, four for eight with a double and a home run as well. And then Miggy, two for eight with a double. So, I mean, there's not a ton. I mean, there's some one-offs there, but there's just other options at pitching-wise. I probably am not going to have much exposure to this game. Unless we see some massive thing. Now, I haven't even looked at the BVP uh, like you got, like we're doing right now. So this is all off the cuff right here at the top. So what Mariners bats have had success against Matt Boyd? Ihu and Eo Suarez, one for nine with a double. Tom Murphy is three for nine with two home runs. Uh, Colton Wong is two for three with two home runs. Other than that, I mean, J.B. Crawford's four for nine, so that number looks good at 444, but no extra base hits. Um same thing with Teoscar Hernandez, one for nine, no extra base hits. A.J. Pollock, two for four. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot here, guys. Um, I'm probably going to avoid this game. There's just other games I know for sure we can stack and feel comfortable about. Reds at the Marlins is next. You got Graham Ashcraft versus Yuri Perez. Ashcraft, uh, you know, up and down season so far. 23 plate appearances against the Marlins, 217 batting average, 17.4K percentage. Um, Reds just put up <laughs> yesterday's video. I loved Kodai Singa. Um, and of course the Reds put up five runs on him, <clears throat> which I said could happen. Um, just do that. It was, uh, just a weird day overall, you know, six total games. You had three early, three late. And I mean, the game, the game was in Cincinnati, which anything can happen in Cincy. Basically the ball flies out of there quickly. A lot of hits there. Uh, this game's on the road. Yuri Perez has actually got called up a couple of days ago, making his major league debut. Um, if he's on the slate, which he should be, FanDuel and DraftKings have known for a couple of days that they're calling him up. I like this. Uh, he's got really electric stuff. He's the Marlins' number one prospect. I don't know if 
that really means anything when it's the Marlins, but he's their number one prospect making a start. Um, I picked him up in my season long. I will have exposure to Perez making his debut against the Reds, especially in Miami tonight. Mets at the Nationals is next as of right now. We don't know who is the pitcher for the Mets. And then the Nationals, McKenzie Gore, 28 plate appearances, 42.9K percentage, a 231 batting average against him. The Mets should be good against him, but the Mets are metting so hard before even September this year. It's crazy. As much money as the Mets spent, it's not much to show. Got Tommy Pham, two for eight. Starling Marte, one for three. Jeff McNeil, two for two. Uh, Eduardo Escobar, one for two with a triple. I mean, there's not much going on. I think a sneakier option will be McKenzie Gore because I think a lot of people be like, well, on paper, the Mets are good. But they're not. I mean, if you look at the paper, they've been atrocious. That's just some, my thought process. I won't have a ton of exposure to McKenzie Gore, but I'll, I'll dabble a little bit. I'll look at him against the Mets roster. That should hit him well. They're just not hitting anyone right now. And, yeah, I mean – we don't know who's pitching for the Mets, so can't really go with Washington bats. None off the top of my head hit, but once we get those uh, MLB batter trends for both FanDuel and DraftKings, we can kind of see if any of those bats kind of jump out at us. Next game on the slate, Pittsburgh Pirates at Baltimore Orioles. At the beginning of the season, I would have said this would not be a good matchup, but this is actually going to be a good matchup, probably. The games, anyway. The series. Uh, Oviedo. He's only faced seven batters, given up a 600 batting average, striking out none. And then Kyle Bradish, two plate appearances, nothing. There's not a ton here. Um, it just really depends on what lineups are going to be out there. So this is kind of one that jumps out. I mean, Adam Frazier, if he's in there, he's three for five. That's why the number is so high. Other than that, he hasn't really faced anybody. So just depending on what lineups come out, I don't think I'll have any exposure to these pitchers. I will be looking at the bats, though. So kind of looking at the bats... Uh, it really depends on the lineups coming out. You know, the top four or five patters uh, will be ones that jump out. So ones that jump out at me just on paper or off the top of my head, if we're looking at Pirates bats, I'm looking at just the top. So um, really who's leading off? You got Brian Reynolds, um, Cabrian Hayes, uh, Sawinski. Uh, it really depends on, I mean, Chris Owens. It just, I don't know. I think he'll probably be towards the lower end. Just some that jump out. On the flip side, I think you pretty much know the Orioles that you want to take. Adley, you want to go with Adley. You want to go Mountcastle, Cedric Mullins, um, just to name three or four. I mean, none have really had success. If Adam Frazier's in there, absolutely we'll take Adam Frazier against his old team. Um, so that's kind of where I'd look at there. I, I won't have any exposure to the pitching, though. We'll look at the bats in this one. As of now, Tampa Bay versus the Yankees. Don't know who Tampa Bay is doing. Then we've got Garrett Cole. Uh, 208 bat plate appearances, 28.4K percentage, a 233 batting average. Now, he was absolutely rolling on, what was it, Sunday against Tampa Bay. Just rolling. Um, got a crucial four-game slate here. Uh, it was 6 nothing, I believe. Yeah. Um, it was 6 nothing for Cole. And then he just came unraveled for whatever reason. Was cruising along and then ended up giving up five earned runs. Had six strikeouts. It bumped his ERA up to 209. They went into extra innings here. And yeah, um, wild. I don't think it happens again. I really do like Cole in this one. Uh, especially now it's at home. He's got the home crowd behind him. So I think we're going to see some vintage Cole here. And yeah, I, I would love to see that. And then depending on who Tampa Bay brings out. You got to go the hot hand with Bader. I think you put Bader in there as many times as you possibly can. If it is a righty pitcher, Jake Bowers should be in this uh, lineup. I like Bader, Bowers, Rizzo, Judge. Glaber's been coming on strong. DJ's been coming on strong. There's a lot of uh, the Yankees batters that you would like. And they're starting to hit and come around. I know they played the A's. I know that. Put up a ton of runs in the A's series. The, just let's keep the Let's keep it alive and push through on that one. So, I don't really like Tampa Bay here. I will look at Garrett Cole, and I will look at the Yankees as stacking options there. Braves at the Blue Jays is next. you got Spencer Strider versus Chris Bassett. Strider only five plate appearances. Obviously, they don't see each other a ton. 250 batting average, 60% K. I mean, whoa, 60% K, but yeah, it's that's not much. It's five plate appearances. 
Chris Bassett, on the other hand, 60 plate appearances against the uh, Braves, only 16.7K percentage, has given up a 365 batting average. Now, Bassett pitched in for the Mets, what, one year? Um, so that's where the plate appearances are coming from. So I absolutely love Spencer Strider here. Uh, he's a stud. He's striking out a ton to start the season. Let's see what Braves bats have had success. Just off the top of my head, I'm going to say it's probably going to be players. I'm going to say it's probably Matt Olson, um, Acuna, probably make up the two big ones. But I could be wrong. Um, let's see. Nope, Matt Olson, one for six, but that one hit is a home run. Uh, Acuna Jr., two for six. Michael Harris, the second, 0 for 3. Travis Darno, 3 for 5 with a double. Eddie Rosario, 3 for 7 with a double. Austin Riley, 3 for 7 with a home run. RC is 3 for 3. Sean Murphy, 2 for 3 with a home run or a double. So, I mean, there are numbers there. I don't mind. I won't, I probably won't have any exposure to Bassett, but being this game, I will look at Strider and I will look at the Braves stack there. Angels versus the Guardians is next. You got Tyler Anderson versus Logan Allen. Anderson, 18 plate appearances, 278 batting average, striking out only 22.2%. And then we got Logan Allen, on the other hand. Um, hasn't faced them before. Doing pretty good to start the season. Uh, he's not the same. Now, this is where I was confused, but he made his major league debut either last week or the week before. And I'm like, wait a minute. Logan Allen on the Guardians, he was there not that long ago, right? Am I Or am I crazy? And I was crazy, it, but they have the same name. So this season, he's made three starts. Against Miami, six innings, got the dub, 12K per nine. Start after that, five innings against Boston, lost the game. And then his last start against Minnesota, 5.2 innings, only 4.76K per nine. The one start against Boston where he gave up a few runs, 14.4K. So he gave up the runs, but he was getting the strikeouts. And that's kind of what we need in this one. The Angels are not a good team. Um, they haven't seen him before. It's in Cleveland. I don't mind Logan Allen. I don't know if I'll have any exposure to Tyler Anderson. I will have exposure to Logan Allen, though. And then, I mean, Guardians, Bats. I don't know if I'll be um, really stacking either team but yeah i mean mike zanino two for three with a double that's it's not much going on else so uh while i won't have exposure to anderson that doesn't mean i'll be stacking the guardians there's just other teams we can look at so i probably won't have any exposure to anderson i will have exposure to allen next game cardinals at the red sox adam wainwright versus james paxton wainwright obviously we know came off the il this weekend didn't do much at all then we've got uh, James Paxton making his season debut. Um, I mean, this dude, watching him with the Yankees for a couple of seasons, you want to like him. He is a stud. We know that. He pitched so well in Seattle, but he is so injury prone. It's wild to me that Boston has both Chris Sale and James Paxton, both tall lefties, lanky lefties that are very injury pr prone in the same uh, rotation. It's wild to me. Now, the Cardinals haven't played well. I don't know if James Paxton will be on any sort of, you know, limits, if he'll have anything. Let's just look real quick. Because I know the Cardinals have been so bad that I guarantee he's not even Paxton. Yeah, he's a free agent in my season long, obviously, for no reason, <laughs> or for a reason. Uh, Paxton will make his season debut on Friday against the Braves. First major league start since April 6, 2021. This leaves the Red Sox with six starters at the moment. Um, so he did have one outing. Um, uh, he had one outing in AAA. Uh, or no, he, he had an outing in the spring before he hurt his hamstring. 6.23 ERA and 16 walks and 21 and two-third innings during his rehab assignment. Yikes. Not ideal. Wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I, I don't want to wish this on anyone. Would not be surprised if Paxton leaves this game hurt. I don't want to be I don't want to be that person. Will not surprise me at all if he leaves this game hurt. Doesn't mean I want to take Wainwright. 
in those games, 35 plate appearances, 258 batting average, 17.1K percentage against the Red Sox. Problem is, this is in Boston, and they have given up a ton of runs this year, which you can find over at FantasyTeamAdvisors.com. You can find that on the website under the ballpark rankings. They have give up a ton of runs and home runs here. Probably am looking at the offenses in this one. I don't mind either offense. If we're looking at Boston's offense against Wainwright, the players that have had success against him, Justin Turner, 4 for 14 with a home run, so not much there. Same thing with Tapia, 2 for 7. Jaron Duran, 1 for 2, but that one hit was a triple. Devers, 1 for 2. Um, Ver- Verdugo's 0 for 3, but every time I look at the box score, he's he's got a home run or extra base hits or total bases. So I don't mind a Boston stack against Wainwright. And same thing on the flip side. Paxson's really only faced 9 play, probably 1 player. Yeah, Arenado, one for eight, one double. Um, obviously, not much going on. I'm absolutely avoiding both of these pitchers. I'm taking both of these offenses. Will really depend when the offenses come out. But yeah, just thinking of who I would take against James Paxton. I'm looking at Wilson Contreras as long as he's in the lineup. Arenado, um, which I don't care about that number because whatever. This is James Paxton. Uh, obviously, Goldschmidt. And then really depends, you know. Who's going to be in there? Is it going to be Edmund, Newt Barr, um, O'Neal? I'm looking at all the righties that I would love, and even some lefties against Paxton. I fully expect James Paxton to go less than five innings, and I I think he's going to get hurt. It would not surprise me. If you – you know what? I don't want to play this game, but I'll give someone a free month if you comment on this that James Paxton will not get hurt. If he does get hurt, though, it's off, and you have to buy a subscription. So good luck, and may the odds forever be in your favor, or however you say that. Cubs of the Twins is next. You got Drew Smiley versus Sonny Gray. Drew Smiley, 52 plate appearances, 250 batting average, 25K percentage. Uh, and then this one surprises me. Sonny Gray, 83 plate appearances, 26.5K percentage, a 329 batting average. I want to see why. Is it one or two players that have bumped this batting average up that that's what we look at? Because this is what we drill down and really look at the stats here. So Jan Gomes, 2 for 14 with a double. Trey Mancini batting 467, 7 for 15 with two doubles and a home run. Eric Cosmer, 4 for 9 with no extra base hits. That's 444. Yeah, Ian Happ, 4 for 10 with a double and a home run. So you can really see Dan's be 3 for 5 with a double and a triple. So that's a 600 batting average. That's really brought it up along with the 400. That is why we drill down. That is why you guys come here and look at these videos. Because on the surface, this doesn't look good. But we know that Sonny Gray has pitched so well for the Twins outside of being on the Yankees in a big market. He is thriving. And I absolutely love this game because it is not in Chicago. So I do like Sonny Gray. I think people are going to see this number and be like, wow, that, that's bad. But you drill down, it's only really a handful of players. Other than that, he's done really well. Drew Smiley, on the other hand, 52 plate appearances, a 250 batting average. What Minnesota Twins have had success against Smiley in the past? Kyle Farmer, 3 for 11, that's a 273. Donovan Solano, 4 for 12, that's 333. No one's hit a home run. Buxton's two for five with a triple. Would not be surprised if Buxton goes yard in this one. Um, We've got to get all the Buxton we can get in there before he gets hurt. So, yeah, um, I don't think I'll be stacking against him, but there are some batters that you could – I really like Buxton against Drew Smiley. (laughs) Astros at the White Sox, two teams that have been playing terrible as of late. Uh, J.P. France, who's never faced anyone before, against Michael Kopech. Kopech, 37 plate appearances, only 13.5K percentage, and a 371 batting average. Let's dig down a little bit deeper and see why it's 371. Kyle Tucker, 4 for 9 with a a double and a home run. That's 444 batting average. Then you drop down. Bregman's 3 for 8. That's 375. Maldonado's 2 for 4. That's 500 batting average. That's going to get you right there. That's going to bump up that number. Um, But, yeah, I mean, two people have had home runs, Tucker and Dubon. Uh, Jordan's only one for four, but I'm completely okay with taking Jordan Alvarez here. So I honestly don't mind. I don't think I'll have exposure to either of these in cash. I could see you using both in GPP just because of how bad the opposing teams have been. And then if, you know, there are one-off teams that you could be taking against Kopech or one-off players against both of these pitchers. 
Royals at the Brewers is next. You got to be announced for the Royals, which is never good, versus Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns, 15 plate appearances, a 214 batting average, 33.3K percentage. Now, obviously, looking at those numbers, not much because only 15 plate appearances, which is you can kind of expect out of that. So kind of look at Corbin Burns. He's not really been pitching that well to start this season. Um, but he's got a 386 ERA right now, three wins, coming off a 294 ERA last year with 12 wins, having kind of a down year. Um, but I would like this game a little bit more if it was in Kansas City. But if he could turn a season around, it's against this Kansas City team. So I'm really not looking at any Casey bats. I'm really not looking at any Brewers bats. I am looking at Corbin Burns in this one. Phillies at the Rockies, so you got – a really good uh, matchup here, but it is in Coors, so every player you take is going to be priced up due to the Coors effect. you got Taiwan Walker versus Austin Gomber. Walker, 77 plate appearances, a 214 batting average with 20.8K percentage. And then Gomber, 32 plate appearances, 28.1K percentage, 207 batting average. Honestly, if you want to go sneaky, I don't mind a Taiwan Walker pick here. 100% contrarian GPP. Most likely he gets lit up, but there is a chance that he'll be under-owned because it is Coors, and if he does have a good game, you'll be that far ahead of the field. So looking at that, let's see what Colorado Bats have had success against him. Blackman, 4 for 18, nothing. Jerks and Profar, 4 for 9 with two home runs. That's not bad. Uh, Chris Bryant, 3 for 9 with a home run. Um, that's really it. I mean, other than that, no one's had much success. So I don't mind those three if you are taking bats against Walker. And then the flip side, what bats would you take against Austin Gomber from the Phillies? Castellanos, one for five. I don't mind. Bryce Harper, two for six with a double. Trey Turner, one for six with a triple. Uh, Schwarber, over two, but wouldn't be surprised if he hits a home run. Yeah, honestly, um, I maybe look at Taiwan Walker a little bit. But other than that, I won't have any exposure to Gomber. And I will be looking at bats from both sides of the plate here on both teams. Next game, Giants at the Diamondbacks. As of right now, we don't know who's pitching for the Giants, so stay tuned. And then versus Ryan Nelson, who has never faced the Giants before. I would like this a little bit more if it were in San Francisco instead of Arizona, but we'll take what we can get there. Um, I don't mind a Ryan Nelson uh, option for GPPs. I don't really trust him in cash unless it's DraftKings where you're taking a second pitcher because it'll be a little bit cheaper. Um, but, yeah, I mean – there's just other options, other games that I'll be stacking more than looking at this. Could Depending on who the Giants are out there, I'm always up for an, an Arizona stack. I know on fr uh, Thursday's slate, Corbin Carroll, I think, just got the day off. I don't think he's hurt. So he's always a great option, especially at home. Um, if he gets on base, he gets a couple stolen bases, he's going to get you those DFS points that you need. And then there's just other options uh, for Arizona that we can stack, you know, one through four, one through five, depending on what site you're playing on. Next game, the Rangers at the Athletics. You got Martin Perez versus Ken Waldachuk. Perez, 33 plate appearances, a 188 batting average, striking out 15.2%. And then Waldachuk, 23 plate appearances, a 318 batting average there. Love me, Perez. Any Basically, any pitcher against the Athletics is going to be a yes for me until further notice. Perez, uh, if you don't want to do that and you want to see what Oakland Bats have had success against Perez, Carlo, Carlos Perez, 3 for 10 a, and a double. Uh, Nick Allen, two for six with a home run. Uh, Loriano is still day-to-day. -day. Tony Kemp, 0 for three. Jesus Aguilar, 0 for two. Kevin Smith, 0 for three. Brent Rooker, 0 for one. Rooker's another one if you are taken. Um, some Oakland bats I don't mind, but I'm probably not going to have any exposure to any Oakland players. And then on the flip side of that, what Rangers batters have had success against Waldachuk in the 23 to play appearances? We can see... Adolis Garcia, two for two, double and home run, so he sees the ball well out of his hand. Nate Lowe is always a good choice at one for three. Marcus Simeon's always a good choice at two for three with two doubles. Josh Jung, one for three, one double. I wouldn't be surprised if Jung wins rookie of the year. Sam Huff, I don't know if he'll be in there, one for two with a double as well. So those are kind of the players that I would look at. I don't mind a Texas stack against Waldachuk, though. Wish it were in Texas, but take it. Pitchers Park, I'll take Martin Perez and the Rangers batters. Then the final game on the slate, the rivalry, the Padres at the Dodgers. you got Blake Snell versus Dustin May. Snell, 183 plate appearances, 27.9K percentage, a 236 batting average against, 237 batting average against him. This, 
I wish it were in San Diego just because it is a little bit better of a pitcher's park there. But we'll take what we can get. And then on the flip side, Dustin May, 113 plate appearances, 23.9K percentage, 194 batting average here. I don't trust Blake Snell. His last start against the Dodgers just last week, six innings, three ERA. They lost one, two to one, so not bad. Uh, his whip was 0.67. His K per nine was nine, and he did have a quality start. But he did lose that game against the Dodgers. And they just saw him. Now they get to face him at home. I really like the Dodgers as a stack here. And then Dustin May, on the other hand, pretty sure he just pitched as well. Yeah, he just faced them, I believe, the same day. So it's the same matchup. Six innings, got the dub, gave up no runs, uh, 0.67 whip, and a 9K per 9 with one quality start out of there. Love me some Dustin May and the Dodgers as a stack. What Dodgers, you may ask? Let's see what Dodgers bats we're looking at in this matchup. Mookie Betts, 10 for 44, two doubles. I believe he might have the best BVP on the slate. Um, Max Muncy, two for 21, a double and a home run. Who's he's, That numbers aren't good, but I don't mind Muncy. Chris Taylor, six for 24 with a double and three home runs. Fantastic numbers there. Freeman, four for 14 with... Uh, a double. Um, Austin Barnes is nine, five for nine with three doubles. Don't mind that. Uh, but yeah, I in GPPs you could throw out Blake. If you were choosing not to stack the Dodgers, you could throw Blake Snell in there for a GPP to go under owned. But again, the Dodgers are a very good team. We know that Blake Snell could go eight innings, no earned runs, nine strikeouts, or he gets absolutely shell called Blake Schnell shell <laughs> and then uh, you lose a lot of points there so personally for me if I'm building lineups in this one I would only throw Snell into a couple of lineups for GPP otherwise I'm all over Dustin May and I'm all over um, the Dodgers as a stack here so there you go we broke down all of the games all of the pitchers some of the bats if you want to see more check out fantasyteamadvisors.com we have the BVP, we have stolen bases, we have the stacks, we have the cheat sheet, we have everything. And starting today, you can get it for $10 a month. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com is the website. Hit that like button if you found this video at all helpful. Trying to hit 10,000 subscribers on here and 10,000 followers on Twitter before the All-Star break, which with your help, I know we can get there. So let's rock and roll with that. Good luck on this slate Please leave us some feedback. What do you want to see in this these videos? What do you want to see from us to help make you a better DFS player? Let us know down below or hit us up on Twitter at advisors underscore team. That's all we got. If you're still sticking around, we will have a video to show who the winner was for um, the Kansas City White Sox game actually got played today. So there will be one lucky person. Not very many people signed up. So we will check that out. And we're good to go there. So good luck today, everybody. Let's have a great start to the weekend. Let's bring up some bacon. Peace.